I'm here today to talk about a little idea, a website I came up with a few good years ago. As a matter of fact, almost 10 years ago. But before I go and explain exactly what this project was all about, let me give you, let me start with one confession. I'm a devoted gamer. My love to games started a long time ago with the adventure with pen and paper riddles in pre-computerized era. I'm a little over 30 years old now. I grew up with games and video games, have worked inside the industry and witnessed how it evolved and changed in the past 20 years. I really love games of all kinds, from video games to board games to role-playing games to card games to pen and paper riddles. And what I always loved in games, to put it very simple, was challenge. I also like to use my imagination to think outside the box. I like competition. And finally, I like educational aspects of playing games. And I'm probably not alone in here, so... How many people here in the audience play games or video games? Hands up. Okay. All of you. <laughs> and I'm not surprised, because games are a big part of our lives now. We play everywhere, on every device possible. But still, I'm pretty much sure that those of you who play games You've all heard at least one of those sentences before. Don't play that stupid game. Do something more productive. You better learn something instead of wasting your precious time on silly things. Oh, come on. I think there is this unjust opinion about games and a very un unfair stereotype of a gamer. Silly, stupid, unproductive person with social communication problems who spends countless of hours locked in the room alone, shooting virtual enemies in senseless battles. Oh, please, is this really what we gamers are like? Well, okay, I will play fair, and I admit, some games can be silly, but except for a small fraction that can be played for just for pure fun or maybe to cure free time, video games can inspire, can amaze, and educate in so many great areas. Do you want a few examples? There we go. Adventure games and role-playing games help me develop my English and express myself. Strategy games help me learn about history, civilization, and basic economy. First and third person shooters, those to be blamed for all the world's evil, help me develop my 3D imagination and decisive skills. Puzzle games engage me into creatively thinking. Multiplayer games develop my teamwork and communicative skills. And playing games in general helped me develop a very wide range of computer skills. Stupid, silly games. You know what? I think I use all those skills every day in my work. OK, maybe except for the history part. But games can actually make you smarter. So what's the process behind it? In psychology, there is this concept of fluid and crystallized intelligence originally identified and developed by psychologist Raymond Cattle. It recently was explored by Andrea Kuszewski, um, behavior therapist and psychologist. Fluid intelligence is this capacity to think logically and solve problems in new situations independently to your acquired knowledge. It's like ability to solve problems, identify patterns that form these problems, and solve them using logic. This type of intelligence is necessary for all logical problem solving of scientific, mathematical, or technical nature, and represents the current abstract uh, uh, intellectual ability uh, to solve problems. And it's opposed to crystallized intelligence, which is the ability to use your pre-learned skills, knowledge, and experience, which relies on accessing information from long-term memory. So, Andra Kuszewski pointed out that to improve your fluid intelligence, we should seek novelty, we should challenge yourself, think creatively, do things the hard way, and we should network. All those activities are believed to release dopamine, which keeps our brains engaged. Challenging yourself and doing things the hard way forces you to look for new solutions and thinking creatively is more useful than just memorizing play, plain facts that cannot be adapted to every possible situation. The level of our fluid intelligence is variable and can be extended in time simply by the process of learning and practicing new things. 
for instance, by playing uh, different genres of games. All those amazing talks and concepts, all those information are easily to be found uh, online, and they can give you a great input into theoretical fields or how great source of enchanting your skills and intelligence games can be. But wouldn't it be just amazing to see some of these statements being put in practice and tested maybe? Do we really like to do things the hard way? It actually happened that I have created a very cruel experiment back in 2004 that have been run on over two million test subjects in order to find the answer to that little question. Back then, it was a time when internet was only about to spread its wings. A pre-social networking era to communicate people were using IRC chats, software messengers, and to discuss and share ideas, they would rather go to a specific discussion board. A lot has changed in the meantime. Today, with social media products, we share everything in a blink of an eye. We also have all communicators in one place. Back then, it was still more difficult to advertise and share ideas online. And to conclude, having a web traffic of hundreds of thousands of hits was considered a great achievement. I have designed Zest in my spare time and launched it in December 2004. Very simple site, first version was less than two megabytes in total, was mainly composed of plain HTML code that I've only started to learn to progress with the project. And it looks something like this. Plain text, very simple, little disturbing graphic. Was stored on a free server with a very small capacity and restricted monthly traffic. So this is how the start page looks now after a heavy facelift applied in 2007. The site was initially launched only on the intranet in my dorm house, just to be shared with my few close friends, but they soon convinced me to launch it online. So later on that month, Zest was introduced on the internet for everyone to try. And this was the point where madness began. In just two weeks, the site got over 200,000 hits and caused two different servers to crash. In the next two months, I had to change servers two more times with exactly the same result. The interest was so huge that the site was constantly blocked by the incoming traffic. And even that didn't drive people away from the site. They actually kept coming and coming and coming. Hundreds were visiting and discussing their opinions about the site on the official forum. And my mailbox was bombarded with so many emails, I simply had no power to reply to. This all happened in just two weeks. And the whole thing wasn't even intended, not planned, not anyhow advertised, and nowhere close to be expected. In the first few years, the interest was so huge that the overall site counter reached over two million people. I was shocked and thrilled to see this. And this was the first time in my life when I've witnessed and understood that the internet brought everything we knew before to a new dimension where ideas can, be, can live their own lives and can be spread around in the blink of an eye. So what was on my side that dragged this mud-like level of inexplicable attention? It was an idea of a great challenge, a madman's riddle. So Zest is an online challenge that is consisted of 101 riddles, set in a psychedelic mood and dark, almost horror theme. Today, it is known as one of the most popular and one of, if not the hardest reader on the internet. The idea behind this is very simple, to progress further and to complete all 101 riddles. Each riddle is a website, or sometimes a set of sub-websites, composed of HTML code, <coughs> simple graphics. A little curious detail here, so some images that are found in the game are of very personal nature, so they actually worked for me as a riddle photo blog, when I hid and coded my personal interests, music I loved, quotes that were important to me at that stage, books, movies, games references, and even images of my friends, all wrapped in a psychedelic script to lead you through the game. So there is also very personal, or should I rather say, a twist added to it. So to decode the password and proceed further, a person had to look for hints in every possible fragment of the site, in the title, source code, text, graphics, backgrounds, and use them in either logical or abstract way or actually any other way to decode the password. Type it in the URL address, hit enter. Easy? Well, the trick is one player progresses further. The rules of basic and a, or even advanced knowledge may not be sufficient, and the person has to take a few steps further, think outside the box, learn how to use additional software, how to convert codes, use analogies to the previous riddles to figure out the passwords. 
So actually, how to use the mighty internet to learn new patterns, specific codes, and hacking tricks to find the answers. The common opinion about Zest was it's very time consuming, extremely addictive, but also very rewarding for those who found their way through the maze of endless riddles. It is also good to know that, or to mention, that only a tiny fraction of players, around 100 of hundreds of thousands, finished the whole riddle. Some people needed years to finish the game. Others needed years just to give up. <laughs> it was also a great pleasure and most rewarding experience to me as a lead designer to see the community keep going for years and maintaining the project alive. So some still stay with the site and still help others to tr uh, that try to beat the game. Okay, so I guess we have a few minutes left. So before I'm kicked out of the <laughs> stage, <laughs> I'd like to show you how, to, how the game was designed and how to solve a few example riddles. A logical conclusion would be to start with number one, maybe. <laughs> okay, so this riddle is composed of page title. You can't see it in here, but it says one is the loneliest number. A grid-like image in the center and a plain text below that says, too dark to see a thing. Okay, so this picture looks a little bit too dark to see a thing to me. So what can we do? Maybe we need to make it more bright. To solve this riddle, brighten your screen or copy your picture onto your hard drive, use any um, graphical um, software um, to, to adjust brightness, focus on the center, and you should now be able to see deep in the center easily. And deep, indeed, is the answer to the first riddle. You have to change the URL, and you will advance to a new, yeah, and you will, you will proceed to the next stage. Okay, so that was a very easy one, and here comes number three. The title of this one is O's. So what do we have in here? Another grid-like thing full of letters. Is this O's? Well, what is O's? <laughs> and the text uh, says something about the source code. Source code is a hinful place. Reject only your ignorance and you may survive. So let's check the source code then. Once inside the source code, we can see some hidden text here, which is not visible on the, on the real site normally. One fragment exactly says things in O's are strange and beautiful, but Dorothy just wants to get back home. This means we need to find things in those words, maybe. So, maybe in our grid-like thing. That could be the solution. So, so okay, I'm going to tell you, there are, there are at least three ways to solve this riddle, and I'm going to show you two of them. Yeah, so the first one is if we go back to the, to the grid-like thing, and let's see if we can find any words in here, in the grid-like thing. Just. Thing. Thing. Open. 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 O's. O's. Yeah. Yeah. Type. Type. Very good. Okay. okay, so we have a few of them. So, typing the words uh, results, all those kind of words, results with more hidden messages, as we can see. So, if we apply a logical statement here, if O's is everything, and yet it's not. Therefore, O's is nothing. And nothing is an answer to that riddle. But that could be a, a little bit tricky one. So second solution that's also uh, possible is if you look at, at the grid again, and it's good to redraw it on a piece of paper, you realize a spiraling zigzag pattern. Follow it, and you will see the sentence, just type nothing. <laughs> Again, nothing is the answer to that stage. <laughs> so these are only basic examples of one of the first two riddles, just to give you an idea on the overall concept and design and how to solve the riddles. Further riddles are a little bit more knottier, much more complicated and much, much more complex, and can involve editing graphics and music to find decoded messages, all kinds of codes and ciphers, including Morse code, binary codes, um, and many, many other codes. Chess puzzles, nostalgia puzzles, <laughs> from 0D to 4D puzzles, color puzzles, finally clocks, clocks, 
clocks, and even more clocks puzzles. <laughs> so, if you feel like giving Zest Riddle a try, be my guest. It's still there waiting for new souls to be stolen. But don't say I didn't warn you. I hope this little presentation will propagate the educational aspects of games inter or, and internet projects and encourage all of you to think about new and fresh ideas that can help people develop their intellectual potential. Thank you.